first fish of the day. That didn't take very long. Uh, any fish about... How long did it fish? 15 minutes? <laughs> Actually, I lost, lost another one before this too. Really? Yeah. Well, it's October 22nd and we're halfway through the Fraser Valley cold salmon fishing season. The entire season is roughly around two months to three months long and you can have really good fishing during this period. But halfway through the season, um, this time of year it rains pretty often as it did last night and uh, the river actually came up quite a bit overnight, went from two meters high to 2.8 meters and it's starting to drop right now but um, as you can see right behind me the river is still raging pretty fast and the water clarity is not really that great as well. There's a bit of visibility, but to be honest, really not that ideal for fishing when the conditions are like this. Um, so when it's like this, it's actually better to take a break, uh, get some chores done. That's what we're going to do today because I've been neglecting them in the last few weeks, been too busy fishing, so we're kind of guilty for that. Um, but hopefully it stays pretty dry, like it's doing right now. It's sunny and dry. But if it stays dry overnight and staying pretty cold, uh, this river should come back to shape pretty fast by tomorrow morning and it'll be fishable again. So, mid-October, and fishing has been not too bad. Uh, throughout September, the river has been pretty low. Which is some, you know, which is what we'd expected um, every year. Um, as you go through the summer, uh, when there's no rain, the river level just drops and drops and drops. And right into September, it gets pretty low uh, before we get that uh, typical rainstorm in October. So, uh, but don't be deceived by that. Even though the river is so low, um, fish can still come up the system, um, but most of the time they move at night. So the last few weeks, what I have been doing is going out uh, very early in the morning, fishing at first light. So I'll get to the fishing spot in the dark and uh, wait for sunrise. And very, it's very typical that the fish will be biting for the first half an hour, very, very good in the first half an hour to one hour period. So for example, if first light is around seven o'clock in the morning, so between seven o'clock and eight o'clock in the morning can be really, really good. And uh, then it gets kind of, it switches off because the water is so low and clear and these fish, once the lighting gets a little brighter and the fish just kind of switch off, they don't bite anymore, even though they're still in the area. Um, so I've been flow fishing with roe um, for these fish and uh, even though it's really, really fun flow fishing for them and it can be really hard to hook them because they're so fast, um, the cold salmon, the, the bites are so light and uh, little times when you hook them, they're so easy, they can come off the hook so easily as well. The most effective way for me is actually spin casting with spoons and spinners and jigs. So in this video, it's, that's what we're gonna focus on. It's um, how I like to do it, especially in October and November. Uh, when, once the water comes up, um, I like to just cast and retrieve lures and that works so much better than anything else, believe me. Uh, if you've never done any salmon fishing, any cold salmon fishing in, in rivers, definitely try out uh, spin casting uh, to start with and uh, that, that will get you going for sure. So anyway, so uh, the last few weeks, like I said, we've been fishing at first light, we're getting a few fish here and there, not getting a whole lot of fish. Quite often I'll find that the fish will bite the lure a few seconds after it hits the surface um, once I cast it out. Um, once it sinks to the depth um, where the fish are, I'll get a hit and that's when I'll, I'll hook the fish right away. The, the other location is when you get a hit is when you retrieve. Cold salmon love to follow your uh, lures back to you. So they'll, they'll, they'll follow, they'll follow, and they'll follow, and they'll, they'll commit in the very last minute. Yeah, definitely try out different techniques and different locations. There isn't one single best technique and isn't one single best fishing spot for um, these fish 
um, over the years. You just gotta move around quite a bit and fish, and uh, and as as you catch more and more, you develop a pattern, and then you can kind of figure out where to go and what to use um, under certain water conditions, uh, weather conditions, and so on. What I want to do is I want to show you guys exactly what type of gear I use for spin casting for cold salmon and uh, so you can go out and try them out yourselves as well. So these are what I like to use. Uh, they're not necessarily the best tackle for you as well, but it kind of gives you an idea um, what, what, you, what you need in general. So let's go take a look. Okay, so to start out with, you need a good um, spin, spinning rod and spinning reel. So my trusty Shimano fishing rod and reel is, um, has been really good to me in the last few years. Um, this is a Shimano Claris uh, spinning rod. It's uh, 9 foot long and I believe it's rated between 6 and 10 pound test. Uh, this is my favorite cold salmon rod for spin casting. Um, but I've also caught steelhead, I've caught bull trout, I've caught um, chum salmon with this rod as well. So to go with the rod, I have a Shimano Sustain 2500FG spinning reel. Um, this reel is one of the um, higher end uh, spinning reel that you can get from Shimano. And there's a, there's a reason for that. You know, you get what you pay for. Um, this reel requires a very uh, minimal amount of maintenance. Um, I've had this again since 2000, I believe it's 2013, 2012. So it's quite a long time now, and it hasn't been really maintained the whole lot. I mean, I've I've um, greased it once in a while and cleaned it, um, but other than that, it has been it's been really good to me. So going on this reel, I got um, Power Pro braided line. This is 15 pound test braided line. It's very very thin, very strong, which allows you to cast really far and it's really stiff. It doesn't stretch, so we can feel all the bites um, at the end of the rod. So, but you don't tie your lure directly onto the, uh, to the braided line. So what I like to do is to use a Seagar a fluorocarbon um, line here. So this, is, this line is um, it's clearer than a monofilament line. It's, uh, the light doesn't reflect and show itself in the water. And uh, it's, it's uh, abrasion resistant so it doesn't scratch very easily and it's very it's stiff so it doesn't again it doesn't stretch so you, you tie this on with mono it does stretch quite a bit and uh, this allows you to feel the bites again a lot faster than let's say having monofilament line so Sega fluorocarbon this is um this is size 15 pound i use either 12 or 15 pound on this as well this is my tackle box right here and that's pretty much all i carry in my um th this box right here goes into my my wedding jacket and that's all i carry so i carry my leader and my a box of lure like that and that's all you need to do you don't you don't really need anything else so there's there's a few different options for lures um i got my gibbs croc spoons my trusty uh, quarter ounce gives croc spoons and this is what I love to use uh, for cold salmon. Um, what I started using last year are these um, Gibbs coho spoons as well. So the difference between the croc and the coho is that the, the croc gets a little more streamlined, it's thinner, um, it's a little longer so it tends to work better in shallower water and uh, in slower water. Whereas if you're fishing in deeper water and where there's quite a bit of current, where you need to get your lure further down, uh, uh, further deep, deeper down, you got to go with something a little heavier, a little more compact. And this is where the cold spoon comes in. So diff quite a few different cold spoons um, and my croc spoons. So these are kind of like the two I love to run um, all the time. I like, to, I like to try my croc spoons first. And if that doesn't get down, Deep enough, I'll go with the cold spoons. New to the game this year are jigs. So Gibbs Delta Tackle has came out with jigs and uh, twitching jigs have become pretty popular for cold salmon. And uh, I don't do a whole lot of um, twitching to be honest, but I know other people have been doing pretty well with these. So we got some half ounce 
uh, twitching jigs. Basically what you do with these is you cast this out, let it sink down, and you, you twitch it up, and sink down, twitch it up, and that would usually trigger the fish to bite as well. So look at these legs and uh, the fluff, and that just kind of looks very, very enticing for the fish. As you can see, it's very, very simple. A box, some leader, my trusty uh, spinning rod and reel. Oh, and one more thing, my net. So this net, I carry all the time with me as well. This goes on the, you know, slide down to my backpack. And uh, the reason I carry the net for is so you can land the fish a lot faster. You tend to lose a lot uh, less fish. So if you have a hatchery coho uh, right in front of you, especially if you're fishing in uh, steeper banks, uh, you want to have a net with you. It's easier to net the fish than tilting the fish and having the fish flopping around and stuff. This also makes it uh, safer for fish that you need to release as well. So with a soft mesh, you can net the fish and keep the fish in the water and hook the fish in the net and just let the fish go that way. And it definitely, it, it makes catch and release much better practice with a net like this. And I like this particular one. This one, again, is made by Gibbs. Um, I've had this one since, I believe it's since 1999, so it's almost 20 years. And it's such a, it's my favorite net just because it's so light. It's collapsible. So this one extends out like so. And uh, you can collapse down. And like I said, it goes in the, on my backpack. Just really convenient, really light, and uh, so useful. And uh, this has saved me so many times uh, when I'm almost losing a fish. So anyways, so net, spinning around the reel, tackle box, and leader. And tomorrow morning, we're gonna go out and see if we can catch some more. Let's see how it goes. Ooh, do you know what's come out? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Tina. Tina. Hey, Tina. Well, it's actually looking pretty good today. And uh, it's about 9.15 in the morning. Just dropped the other kid off at school. So I'm gonna head out for a few hours and try it out. Are you coming? No, you're not today, right? And Daddy's gonna, hey, Daddy's gonna go catch some salmon, hopefully. <laughs> you see the alien Eric in there? Hey. Well, that took quite a while. Um, the walk was about 20 minutes long, and but finally here. Um, my buddy Shane has been fishing here since first light, and he's got two hatchery cold salmon on the beach. But he told me that the fishing has slowed down now. But we'll see. Um, this time of year, the fishing can actually turn on and off quite easily. The fish are constantly moving, so we're just waiting for the next wave of cold salmon moving. I'm gonna make some casts for the next few hours, and see if I can get one as well.
fish of the day. That was pretty fast. I only fished about 15 minutes. I actually had another fish on right before this as well. And uh, just a very gentle tap of it. This fish right here is roughly around, I'll say five pounds, maybe six, if you generous a little bit. But yeah, pretty awesome day so far. And uh, I think I'm gonna get another one, I hope, anyways. Second fish, pretty much on the next cast. So it got out, and uh, this is a, just a little tiny wild, well not tiny, but it's roughly around maybe three pounds. So we're gonna let this guy go, so he can spawn and bring back more fish. Okay, so hatchery fish number two. Uh, this is actually my sixth hookup so far this morning. Um, yeah, it's been great. It's uh, I've only been fishing for roughly around an hour, and they're just, you know, these fish are just picking on the spoon as they retrieve them. Excellent day so far. This one's a little more, a little smaller than the other one, a little more colored, but uh, still very, very nice. Well, that was a pretty good session. We only fished for about two hours long, and uh, I had six hookups, and landed two hatchery fish, which I kept, and released a wild fish and lost the other three. Um, it was, the fishing was really fast. When it turned on, it was one after another one, and everyone else caught fish, which is really nice to see. I'm really, really blessed and really spoiled to be able to enjoy this so close to home. So, um, just a quick session. I'm gonna go home now. I'm gonna come back another day like I said, we still have another month of really good cold sand fishing to go, so there's really no need to be here um, all day. I'm gonna go home and get some stuff down and come back another day.
morning. Um, it's, uh, we back at it again. It's three days after I caught those six fish. And uh, you can see I'm kind of bundled up this morning because it's pretty cold. Uh, we got here around six o'clock in the morning trying to catch the first light bite. But it didn't really happen. Um, but things are just picking up right now. I got a couple of fish. Um, and Shane just got one and Joe got one as well and uh, there were actually quite a few chum salmon in the system compared to a few days ago and that might explain why the coal are not biting as well but there are still fish the river is a little lower than last uh, last time I was here so the, the current has changed a little bit um, it's not as slow anymore there's a bit of a current going through the run over here so it's making spin casting a little harder a little more challenging, but we're still getting them. So let's uh, get back at it. So, five pound? Four or five. Four or five pound? gentleman over here got one on a jig so uh, first cast on new black and purple Zach tag jig first cast out there 15 nice nice beautiful nice coho. fish beautiful coho yeah beautiful. and that's a I guess a blue blue and black yeah I'd say blue and, and purple yeah. yeah yeah it's got the also comes with a lot of movement with the the legs on it as well. They're big hooks, but strong hooks. Yeah. Big aggressive take on that too. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. First first fish on the jig. So how's your morning so far? It was a really good morning. <laughs> yeah. Started off a little quiet, but uh, we ended up getting them. Yeah. You yeah. don't usually fish around this area. Right? I do not. I yeah. usually out in Squamish. I still had fished uh, a little bit. Yeah. here but haven't salmon fished in a while so yeah. it's nice to come out here and have like success yeah but. well we're done for the morning at this spot we think we're gonna go try out another spot pretty good morning i kept one fish joe got two and shane got one so we got four half recall in total and plus a few charm and lost a few fish as well so not as good as a few days ago but still very satisfied well Another full salmon fishing season has come to an end and uh, it was very enjoyable for me once again. Um, as you can see in the video, throughout October I actually got into quite a few fish. Um, in November I got a little too busy, um, got out a few times, but a few times when I went out um, it was either too cold and too snowy or um, the river was blown out because it was too mild and we had too much rain. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Um, as you can see, cold salmon fishing can be very fun, very exciting. But at the same time, it can be very, very challenging if you're just starting out. Um, pay attention to the river level so you can narrow down to where the fish are and um, pay attention to, to the details of your fishing tackle. Be organized and I'm sure you guys can get into some fish as well. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, leave a comment. I'm always happy to answer them and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. Until next time, good luck fishing.